In today's video, we're going to talk about the second part of the summary of the book, Thou Shall Prosper, which is one of the most effective books on how to achieve financial abundance. I place the link for the first part in the description below. But before we start, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and to click the bell icon to be notified for future videos. Thou Shall Prosper was written by a Jewish rabbi named Daniel Lappin, which is a popular international speaker and author of multiple best-selling books. In the first part, we went over five lessons learned from the book. Here are four more. Lesson number six. Success comes to those who embrace change, but keep themselves firmly rooted. Many people fear change, yet as we grow older, we're always learning and changing, even if we're not aware of it. Judaism teaches us to embrace the fact that all humans are unique and that they continue to change throughout their lives. Once we learn to accept this change, we can then learn to profit from it. The Star of David provides clues for us to follow. The star is comprised of two triangles. The three points of one triangle represent three fixed entities, God, humans, and the physical world. The other triangle's points represent openness to change. Change, though often initially painful, is beneficial in the long run. Some companies go out of business when faced with change. For example, many companies went under when steel replaced cast iron as a construction material in the 19th century. But for those that hung on, innovations were soon introduced that allowed them to switch over to the new material, get rid of expensive equipment, and retrain or replace employees. In the end, the change brought profits that outweighed the initial loss. Judaism shows us that change is easier to accept when it arrives gradually, which is why events that honor a marriage or a death take place over several days. Moving forward is a matter of staying connected to the parts of your life that will never change and remaining open to the things that should or have to change. This applies to successful businesses too. Stay rooted to the company's core values and mission statement, but don't close yourself off to other opportunities. Disney's does this well. It maintains a commitment to wholesome family entertainment, but that doesn't stop it from buying other companies like Miramax to produce more adult oriented fare. But to be sure that you actually set your roots in the company and not, for instance, in capital from investors. Here's a cautionary tale. There once was a successful family of jewelers in Montreal. In the late 1990s, the sons moved the business to Los Angeles to take advantage of the dot-com boom. The economy soon tanked and the jewelry business started losing money. This prompted the sons to move the business back to Montreal, to their roots, and sure enough, success returned when they did. Lesson number seven. To forecast the future, learn about the factors and trends that influence your business. People also fear the uncertainty of the future. However, you can minimize uncertainty by making accurate predictions, something that's not really that hard to do. The Talmud is explicit about how the wise are different from the prophetic. While a prophet can look into the future, the wise can look at today's events and see what consequences they'll have tomorrow. You don't have to be a genius to see what the future has in store. You can actually train yourself to figure it out, but to do that well, you must keep your ego and ambitions out of the equation. Ego can obscure the obvious. For instance, the crucial difference between Neville Chamberlain and Winston Churchill, two of history's most intelligent British politicians, is that Chamberlain's ego prevented him from seeing Hitler for who he really was. Churchill's sight, on the other hand, remained unclouded by ego and ambition. To make an accurate forecast, you don't need to become an expert on every business trend in the world, just the ones that directly affect your business. So if you work for a tech company, Stay informed on regulations that might change how people use the internet. And if you're in the auto industry, pay attention to trade regulations, which might change the price of materials. Foreseeing the future comes from careful interpretation of both the present and the past. Generally, a steady and stable economy will stay that way unless an outside force brings change. The price of gold, for example, usually remains steady when inflation and civil unrest are at a minimum. However, investors recently noticed that gold prices were remaining stable despite inflation, which is when they realized that Russia was selling off its reserves to counteract inflation and keep investors buying. When Russia stopped interfering, the price of gold went up, as predicted. Other things to keep an eye on are patterns and trends. These can be especially helpful in industries like fashion, where trends can help predict what will sell next year. Lesson number eight. Money is a part of who we are and there are benefits to giving it away. The old adage that time is money is certainly true. However, there's more to the equation than that. In the Talmud story of Joseph, we also learn that we are money and that money is part of us. 
it's important to separate the two. Everything we possess, time, dignity, persistence, creativity, energy, can be quantified in terms of money. And once we accept this notion, we can move forward and have a healthier relationship with money. Money can also create a bond of trust. This happens every time someone receives a check after performing a service. Money serves as a symbol of reputation as well. For instance, Ford paid $9 billion to purchase Jaguar and Volvo, not because the company's assets were worth that much, Ford was buying their reputation. One of the Jewish terms for money is zuz, which in English means to move. Therefore, money is something that naturally moves between people. When it doesn't, economies can go into recession or fall apart completely. So money isn't meant to be kept hidden away or stashed under a mattress. It's far better to follow Jewish wisdom and use that money for charitable purposes, which can spark the creation of even more wealth. Jewish tradition holds that giving money to charity is more spiritually beneficial to the giver than to the receiver. There's no rational explanation for this, it's just the right thing to do. The United States even bases its tax laws on this principle, which is why donations to religious and charitable foundations are not taxed. In fact, one of the best ways to increase your income is to give your money away. No one likes doing business with someone who seems desperate to cling to every penny. It's better to have a reputation as a giver since most people want to be involved with charitable causes. But remember, though charitableness can come with rewards, you should mainly give because it's the moral thing to do. Lesson number nine, thou shall not retire. Here's another apt adage. Life is a journey, not a destination. One should learn to regard business the same way. This means that we shouldn't be counting the days to retirement. There's no reason to stop earning money when we hit a certain age. To retire is to stop providing value to society. It's also to limit your potential. So pretend you're an Olympic athlete running the 400 meter dash. You don't come to a full stop once you hit the finish line. You keep going, even though you're slowing down. And don't fixate on the end goal. Focusing on retirement can give you a distorted view of life that may cause you to slow down before you even get there. Instead, be one of the many people who remain active and productive in their later years. At age 65, Harlan Sanders was virtually penniless. He was tired of trying to survive on a small monthly retirement check from the government. And so, for the next 15 years, he sold fried chicken and began the empire known as Kentucky Fried Chicken, now known as KFC. Many people are fooled by three lies that get told about retirement. The first is that work has no real value, that it's just a means to an end. From this perspective, the only reason to work is to one day no longer have to. Jewish tradition teaches us otherwise. Work has value for the worker and humanity. It gives them dignity and transforms the world around them. Another lie is that we become weaker and less productive in old age. But unless you have an extremely physical job, you're likely to become more productive as you get older. As you continue to grow your network of contacts, you'll have more and more opportunities to generate wealth. The third lie is that people are meant to be consumers, not creators. But as we've seen in this book summary, spiritually and creating wealth can go hand in hand. And as we get older, our connection to our spiritual selves only gets deeper. In conclusion, we can create success and wealth in business by looking to the ancient teachings and wisdom of Judaism. These principles can be applied to many business situations in the modern world. So guys, this concludes our summary of the book, Thou Shall Prosper by Daniel Lappin. I placed a link of the book below this video. Give us a thumbs up and see you in the next video. Until then, keep smiling. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not done it yet. And don't forget to click the notification button. I hope you guys learned and enjoyed this video. Thank you and have a great day.